It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Kate McCluskey. She's the executive director of the Kent Island-based Canera Foundation. Kate, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you being willing to sit and chat with me. Well, it's an important thing that you all do, uh, and you're definitely needed. I know from personal experience how needed an organization like yours is, but you're better at explaining it than I would be, so please tell everybody what the Canera Foundation does. So the mission of Canera is that we will work to enhance the quality of life for children, youth, and adults with special health care needs and their families across the lifespan. So what we've tried to do is be a resource and a place where we started as a parent-to-parent support group and we were renting spaces or having spaces donated. And because what we found, we had the group started with a mom who had a child that was diagnosed with a disability and couldn't find the resources or support that she needed and wanted in the community. So she started this foundation to really bring people together. When we opened our doors, few years ago, we were able to provide a space. So it's just a really comfortable location where we can provide our ongoing support groups and therapies and just different resources, but also just a place where families can link arms and we can talk about things that some of the really tough things that parents and families struggle with as they're navigating the world of disability. You're looking at several different disabilities. It's not just all one, right? That's right. We have all kinds of different needs that come into Canera. A lot of times people associate us with autism, and we do have a lot of children and teens that are living with autism, but we have all kinds of different disabilities. And how long ago was the Canera Foundation started? So we opened our actual doors in 2016, but the foundation started in 2014 as the parent-to-parent support group. Okay, and when did you join? I started in 2016. I've been with Canera from the beginning. Um, I started out as a um, parent navigator and really kind of working with families one-on-one to just work through whatever they were going through. I'm just going to add a paragraph that I found on your website because um, it's extremely helpful for for me to understand what you do and the problem that exists uh, with families that are looking for help with special needs. It says, did you know that one in four families on the eastern shore have a child with a special health care need? Additionally, in 35% of those families, at least one parent had to cut back or quit work altogether to care for their child. Furthermore, families from the eastern shore travel upwards of 250 miles monthly, weekly, and in some cases daily to ensure that their child has access to quality patient, family-centered, and coordinated care. The Canera Foundation is here to help alleviate the disparity between the systems of care in the urbanized regions of the state compared to the rural regions of the state by providing a coordinated, centralized, patient, family-centered hub of care. It's a whole lot in that paragraph, but it does explain that there is a disparity between what we have even here in Anne Arundel County versus what is available in Queen Anne's County. It's gotten better over the years, but there is a disparity there. It definitely has, and I think when we talk about, I think we're with COVID-19 and this pandemic, I think we're seeing that how do you take care of a child? How do you school a child? How do you provide an education and everything that they need and work at the same time. So I think a lot of our families have have struggled with that and how do you then prepare a child who's getting older to be an adult and be out on their own in the world or to be to have supports and what does that look like and so I know that the families that come to Canera, I see them, they're extremely dedicated to their families and to their kids and also to helping each other. When you come to Canera, I think you see not only that our staff is assisting and our therapists, but that also parents are sitting in our lounge and they're having conversations and they're helping each other and sharing their experiences. And I think that's really, really, really important. 
I, I think it's hugely important, and unfortunately, it's something I didn't have. I did not find out that I had a kid that had special needs, that had autism, because she is a female. She wasn't diagnosed until she was 18, and that is not altogether unusual for females on the spectrum. Right. It's definitely, I mean, it's different for every family, but yes, I mean, I think I think every experience brings its own challenges and its own rewards, and each experience is very unique. You know, they say the, the quote of, you, if you've met one person with autism or with a disability, you've met one person. I mean, we're all very different, and uh, we always try to take that approach of really meeting families where they are, identifying what they need, and figuring out what we can do to assist and support them. You start from very early stages and go right through to adult. From what I see, you offer occupational therapy. You offer transitioning youth and adult help. You offer parents and caregivers help. You offer specialty clinics and, and then just fun gatherings for kids that now have currently been moved online, yes? We do, and Canera was has primarily been a pediatric-based organization. Mm -hmm. But what we realized is that our kids are getting older and our parents are needing more help. Our, um, our parent navigator who's been with us from the beginning, she has a child that is, is venturing into transitional youth and high school. And so all of our kids are getting older. So it's really important that we work to support families through the lifespan and be there. Um, and then in turn, one of my goals is to, would be to have individuals in our location that are mentors and that are working with us. And linking arms with us, too, who can really, who have been with us for a really long time and know our organization. That's a great way of doing it. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm speaking today with Kate McCloskey, Executive Director of Canera Foundation. It's a Stevensville, Maryland-based nonprofit providing support to families with special health care needs through parent support groups, access to therapies, and much more. Kate, um, currently, because we are in the midst of the pandemic, are, are you open? Is the facility open, or is the support you're providing online? We did close in March, and we were trying to look at, you know, what do, what do we want to do? How do we want to continue to support families? And so we ventured into telehealth, and it's been wonderful. I think that it's given a brand new insight for our therapists and for our families to be able to work with our kids in their homes. We also transitioned some of our groups that we're meeting in person, online, and their virtual groups as well, and we've been able to work with teens and adults that way. So as you are well aware, we are, uh, the schools have now started back, and we, we all know that kids with special needs, learning online is not always the best way. Very true. And therapy online is not always the best thing. We have some kids that it just wasn't a good fit for or it wouldn't work for their family. So yes, once again, it's a very, every, every child is unique. It's a tumultuous time. So what, what are the schools, what are you doing to help the parents through this transition uh, from going through in-person classes to all online? And what are you suggesting? What are you thinking about doing? So at first what we did is, is what we've always done, is kind of reach out to our community and say, what can we do for you? What do you need? And we tried to think of some different resources and different things that we could offer. And what we found is that families are definitely looking for some assistance with learning. And they're also looking for social and recreational outlets. So what we will have in a few weeks um, I think this is going to go live this week, but we are offering art programs. So we will have um, different age groups all the way up to adult and then some family art groups that will be virtual. And we've also looked at, we've continued with our team virtual groups, but we've also looked at possibly providing some one-on-one -on -one learning opportunities and some small group opportunities at our location. We're currently open on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for therapies. And then we're doing um, telehealth on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So we do have some, we do, we do have our space. So we're just trying to keep everybody safe and follow the guidelines and provide assistance at the same time. 
Have you had any experience with some of these special needs clients of yours learning how to adapt to wearing masks? While there are some exceptions with people that don't have to wear a mask, it's still the safest way. We have, and our kids have been amazing. They're, they've been incredibly resilient and capable of of working through a lot of this, but of course, I mean, the first time I came out to, we meet our kids out front and we have our process. And the first time I came out with a mask, it was very, it's just an interesting dynamic for a child and for them to see someone and all of our staff in masks. And, but I think it's the way of the world right now. And I think, I think everyone's getting more comfortable with it, but it's still, there are definitely times when, it's tough. It's tough to be in a therapy gym running around and playing and with a mask on your face. And, but I've been really amazed with, our, with the kids in our community. I mean, I know with autism, there's some sensory issues there at place. Some of the neurodiverse community members that I'm aware of find it hard to wear the mask. Yes. They do. And what we've had to do, and we had those discussions, you know, it was how, how strict are we going to be with this policy? Because we want to give our community access to services and we want to do the best that we can, but we also, it's extremely important that we keep everyone safe. So we have had to be very strict with that policy, but of course we've prepped families. We've ordered some pretty um, interesting masks that are you know, co- more comfortable and breathable, and so we always have those in the office in case someone needs one or if they forget theirs or something like that. Can you give me an idea where they came from, so if anybody's listening? We actually got them. We ordered them from Vistaprint, but what we found is that a lot of our kids, because of the way that masks go over their ears, that was an issue. There wasn't any flexibility to make more room on their face, so these have the little sliders behind their ears, And then they have a filter, a throwaway filter that can go in. All right, let's take another short break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. Today I'm speaking with Kate McCluskey. She's the executive director of the Stevensville, Maryland-based Canera Foundation, a nonprofit focusing on providing support to families of children with special health care needs. And actually, children now runs the gamut all the way from birth up until uh, transitioning into adult. One of the things that we talked about before this interview started was you have some thoughts on maybe getting some new people in temporarily while this is going on that came from the schools, but you're not sure if that's going to work or if it, it, or if it is. We've thought about trying to. I think everyone's situation is different. There are a lot of people looking for work, a lot of really valuable, educated people who could, who want to help. So we've looked at possibly bringing in, starting a, a, a so-called uh, tutor program that we could provide one-on-one services or small groups. I think that social piece is really important for families right now. So the one-on-one and the learning piece is important, but if we could incorporate some small groups with that learning to, to provide some social experiences as well, I think that would be something that we could do. I, our space is, is there Monday, Thursday, and Friday right now, and we're not providing therapies. And the reason for that is because we have to put in all the protective measures for cleaning and all of that. So it's not easy to, it's not as easy to do therapies as it was prior to COVID-19, but we do want to be able to serve, serve the families that really need it. And if we can do something to assist with learning and help the school system and be a part of that, we definitely will. And this is in absence of this being provided at the schools right now because of the pandemic, yes? Well, the schools are definitely looking at that, and I, I don't know that anything has been formalized, but I do know that, they're, that they are working. They're trying to figure that out. I think, I think it's tough for all of us to figure out how to keep everybody safe and provide. Nobody knew what was going to happen from one week to the next, from one month to the next. And so the schools kept, I guess they were asking for guidance from the state. The state didn't give guidance until August 27th. It was a crazy fiasco. But uh, so here we are. Yeah, but the bottom line is nobody knew exactly or still doesn't know exactly 
how long this is going to last, the change from one week to the next or from one month to the next with the number of cases there are, can things open, should things still be closed? There's no easy answers here. Right, and I think one thing that I would like, if I could say anything to parents or anyone in this situation is that if they were to need assistance or want to discuss or express things that they could need, they could use or anything that we could do to help, I we welcome those phone calls and those emails. Um, we're more than we've always been a pretty flexible organization in the sense that we really we really want to provide the help that's needed. The the website is canera.org. It's K-I-N-E-R-A. Canera is a compound word, kin, meaning someone or something of the same or similar kind. Era means a date or event forming the beginning of any distinctive period. So again, canera.org. Kate, your clientele, do they come from just Queen Anne's County or will you see people coming across the bridge or from Talbot? We serve families from all over the Eastern Shore. And we also have families that will come over from Anne Arundel County. Being that we sit right at the Bay Bridge, it's, a, it's pretty easy access for Anne Arundel County as well. Um, but our main focus has always been the Eastern Shore. We, will, we won't turn away a family that is not from the Eastern Shore, but that has been our main focus, being that we've had limited resources here and we've tried to be a part in, in making that better. And as with any nonprofit out there, you cannot live by grants alone, correct? Very true. <laughs> How can people help? Typically, we would be doing a fundraiser this time of year. Um, we've partnered with Kentmore Restaurant in the past, and they've been incredibly supportive and a wonderful uh, resource for us. But w since we can't do that, we are looking at doing some virtual fundraisers um, and how to make those interesting um, we haven't gotten all of the details on how we're going to do it, but we'll be doing that. But there's a, there are also ways to donate online. We will be with this new art program. We'll be setting up something where individuals can purchase a membership for another family. So you may have a family that can't afford the program, and it would, it would give them access to some social opportunities and recreational resources. There's a donation page right on canera.org, the website, just to, at the top yeah. of the page. It says donate. You also are uh, part of the Amazon Smile program, so anything you purchase from Amazon, a portion would go to you. Correct. And I think people always, we always want to try to link it to something, you know, something that is meaningful to know that you've made the difference in a life of a child who has access to art and um, a, a resource like that is, is such a wonderful gift to give to someone else. So we always try to really attach it to something mean, meaningful. Absolutely it is. I would just like to share, if you don't mind, we do have a – our virtual groups are called Canera Cares. We do have a virtual workshop coming up on Wednesday, September 30th at 7 o'clock, and that will be advice from an OT. So these are strategies and tips for in-the-home setting. So – whether it's learning or sensory supports or attention, behavior, and motor skills, things like that. Um, that will be on September 30th. And then we have Dr. Samantha Scott, who's a child family psychologist, on October 14th at 7 o'clock. And she'll be talking about her topic is challenging times, how children can manage anxiety, stress, and more during a pandemic. And those are always free of charge. So we hope that anyone interested will join. And again, if anybody needs any added support or if there's anything that we can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Kate, I can't thank you enough and your staff enough for doing what you do because it's so very necessary. And thank you for joining me today as well. Sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week. 